Thank you, everyone. You may have a seat.
We thank you for being in our lives, for wanting to be there, right smack dab in the middle of it, every part of it, to wipe away our tears and to jump with us for joy. We ask that you would continue to be there, Lord. We know that when we don't feel you, it's not because you're not there, it's because we might have turned our backs on you, but you've never turned your back on us. Thank you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is the time in our service that we remember who we are as a community of faith by reading our village statement. It will be printed on the screen, and it's also in your program if you'd like to follow along. We are the Village Church. When we gather in community, we remember that God is with us. We know that we are imperfect people who make mistakes. We give thanks that God loves us anyway. In this community, we practice patience, compassion, and forgiveness. When we leave this gathering, we go out to share God's healing love with the broken world. We are Jesus' citizens of hope in our world. We are followers of Jesus, and we can change the world. Kids, you are dismissed to go downstairs, and I'm going to take this special opportunity to say hi to Jess and Stephen. Jess was our first Village Kids leader way back when we were uh, in Central Toledo, so it's really great to see them and their beautiful daughters. Our scripture today is going to come from the Gospel of John. I'll be reading from the fourth chapter. This is out of the message paraphrase. Jesus realized that the Pharisees were keeping count of the baptisms that he and John performed. Although his disciples, not Jesus, did the actual baptizing. They had posted the score that Jesus was ahead, turning him and John into rivals in the eyes of the people. So Jesus left the Judean countryside and went back to Galilee. To get there, he had to pass through Samaria. He came into Sikar, a Samaritan village, that bordered the field Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's wealth was still there. Jesus, worn out by the trip, sat down at the well. It was noon. A woman, a Samaritan, came to draw water. Jesus said, would you give me a drink of water? His disciples had gone to the village to buy food for lunch. The Samaritan woman, taken aback, asked, how come you, a Jew, are asking me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? Jews in those days would be caught dead talking to Samaritans. Jesus answered, If you knew the generosity of God and who I am, you would be asking me for a drink, and I would give you fresh, living water. The woman said, Sir, you don't even have a bucket to draw with, and this well is deep. So how are you going to get this living water? Are you better man than ancestor Jacob, who dug this well and drank from it, he and his sons and his livestock, and passed it down to us? Jesus said, everyone who drinks this water will get thirsty again and again. Anyone who drinks the water I give will never thirst, not ever. The water I give will be an artesian spring within, gushing fountains of endless life. The woman said, sir, give me this water so I won't ever get thirsty won't ever have to come back to this well again. He said, go call your husband and then come back. I have no husband, she said. That's nicely put, I have no husband. You've had five husbands. And the man you're living with now isn't even your husband. You spoke the truth there, sure enough. Oh, so you're a prophet. Well, tell me this. Our ancestor ancestors worship God at this mountain. But you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place for worship, right? Believe me, woman, the time is coming when you Samaritans will worship the Father neither here at this mountain nor there in Jerusalem. You worship guessing in the dark. We Jews worship in the clear light of day. God's way of salvation is made available only through the Jews. But the time is coming. It has, in fact, come when what you're called will not matter and where you go to worship will not matter. Amen. 
It's who you are and the way you live that count before God. Your worship must engage your spirit in the pursuit of truth. That's the kind of people the Father is out looking for, those who are simply and honestly themselves before him in their worship. God is sheer being itself, spirit. Those who worship him must do it out of their very being, their spirits, their true selves in adoration. The woman said, I don't know about that. I do know that the Messiah is coming. When he arrives, we'll get the whole story. I am he, said Jesus. You don't have to wait any longer or look any further. Just then his disciples came back. They were shocked. They couldn't believe he was talking with that kind of woman. No one said what they were all thinking, but their faces showed it. The woman took the hint and left. In her confusion, she left her water pot. Back in the village, she told the people, come see a man who knew all about the things I did, who knows the inside and out. Do you think this could be the Messiah? And they went out to see for themselves. Many of the Samaritans from that village committed themselves to him because of the woman's witness. He knew all about the things I did. He knows me inside and out. They asked him to stay on. So Jesus stayed two days. A lot more people entrusted their lives to him when they heard what he had said, what he had to say. They said to the woman, we're no longer taking this on your say-so. We've heard it for ourselves and know it for sure. He's the savior of the world.
Jesus knows the truth. One day he had a conversation with a woman from Samaria. Now, if you were here last week, you'll know that this is unusual. I told you last week that Jesus focused his mission on the Jews, and he didn't spend much time with the Gentiles. Samaritans were Gentiles, so it's very unusual that Jesus even talked to this woman. Jewish men didn't talk to women, and they didn't talk to Gentiles, but there you go. Jesus has a lengthy conversation with a Samaritan woman. Go figure. He and his disciples are traveling through Samaria, Samaria, and he stops to rest by a well. It's in the middle of the day. His disciples go into town for some food, and Jesus is waiting here by the well. A woman comes up to draw some water, and Jesus asks her for a drink. She's surprised because, as I have already mentioned, no self-respecting Jewish man would even talk to a woman, let alone ask her. For something. He starts a conversation with her in which he reveals that he knows that she has had five husbands and she's now living with a sixth man. He offers her living water and says if she drinks the water that he has to offer she will never be thirsty again and she says give me some of that water. I want some of that water. They talk about worship and where is the true place to worship because the Jews worship at the temple in Jerusalem and her people worship on this mountain nearby. He says, it doesn't matter where you worship. He says, it's who you are and the way that you live that count before God. Your worship must engage your spirit in pursuit of the truth. That's the kind of people God is looking for, those who are simply and honestly themselves before God in worship. Those who worship God must do it out of their very being, their spirits, their true selves in adoration. That's what God wants. Well, then their conversation is interrupted when the disciples return. They can't believe Jesus is talking to this Samaritan woman. She takes the hint and gets the heck out of there. But she goes back to the town and tells the people, Come and see a man who knew all about the things I did, who knows me inside and out. Do you think this can be the Messiah? She tells the people, Jesus knows me inside and out. You see, Jesus gets past the facade. He gets past the person she's trying to be on the outside. He sees her emotions on the inside, like in the movie Inside Out, where we get to see the feelings Riley has inside her. Jesus knows that the woman has had several husbands. Most women go to the well early in the morning when it's cool, but this woman has gone to the well in the middle of the day. Do you know why? Because she's ashamed of herself, and she wants to go to the well at a time of day when nobody else will be there. She doesn't want to see anyone because she knows that she'll be shamed. Jesus knows all of this about her, and yet he still accepts her. He has a conversation with her about God and about worship. These conversations are reserved for men in that culture. But he treats the woman with respect as he talks to her. When she says that people are waiting for the Messiah, he says, I am he. You don't have to wait any longer or look any further. It's a big deal that he reveals his identity. And the amazing thing about the story is when the woman goes back into town and tells the people, could this be the Messiah? They actually believe her. Because this is not a woman to be respected. It says many of the Samaritans from the village committed themselves to Jesus because of the woman's witness. He knew all about the things I did. He knows me inside and out. This was not a woman to be trusted. But because of her witness, they turned to Jesus. She's an evangelist. Yeah. They ask him to stay on, so he stays on a couple more days. A lot more people entrust their lives 
because of what he had to say. It was her witness. He knows me inside and out that turned the people toward Jesus. You see, we want to be known for who we really are. We want to be known inside and out and accepted for who we are inside. That's what Jesus does for us. He knows us inside and out and loves us anyway. This is why confession is so important. In prayers of confession, we tell Jesus who we really are. Of course, he already knows. Just like he knew that the woman had had several husbands. Jesus knows the secret of our hearts, but it helps us to clear all the bad stuff out when we confess to God. We name the things that give us shame, and then we let them go. Jesus doesn't want us to carry things around in secret. So when we confess them to God, we can let them go. This is letting what is on the inside come to the outside. For example, God, I said a hurtful thing to my friend, and I'm sorry. God, I've been giving in to my addiction, and I need your help to stop this addiction. God, I did this thing that I know is wrong, and I need your forgiveness. Confession is important. Being true to who we are on the inside is also important. We all struggle with this. We all have a facade. We think we need to be perfect on the outside, but there are no perfect people. Jesus invites us to be authentic on the outside, to let our vulnerability show. This means we're honest with one another. When we make mistakes, we admit it. We don't try to cover it up by, by giving excuses or by blaming someone else. We just own up to it. I made a mistake and I'm sorry. Another thing we need to do is to ask for help when we need it. One of the mistakes, quote, perfect people make is that they don't know how to ask for help. They try to do everything themselves because if you ask for help, you're showing vulnerability. Think about it. Even Jesus had a team of 12 disciples to help him. It's a mistake to try to look so strong on the outside that we never ask for help. The best teams are made up of people who have a variety of gifts. So in order to have a good team, you have to admit that you have some strengths and some weaknesses. And if you have strengths and weaknesses, then that means that there are some people who have strengths that are your weaknesses, and they can be on your team. It's okay to ask for help. <clears throat> In the movie Inside Out, the little girl Riley is going through a rough time because her family has moved and she closes off. She doesn't let her parents know what is going on. She loses her joy and sadness takes over her life. It's only when she lets her feelings come to the outside that her parents are able to help her and she's able to find her joy again. <clears throat> in our scripture for today, Jesus is trying to help the woman find meaning in her life. She has messed up her life pretty good. But Jesus shows her that you can never mess up your life so much that there's no room left for God. God will Amen. always love you and give you a fresh start. Amen. God accepts us with all the mistakes and all the brokenness that we have inside. We can let what's inside show on the outside and God will still love us. Remember what the woman said, I met a man who knew me inside out and that man still loved and accepted her. We all have parts of ourselves that we hope no one sees. We think they are unlovable parts. 
Maybe we need to confess our sins and let go of some things. Maybe we need to let go of our self-doubt. Whatever it is, Jesus sees it. And Jesus still loves us. That is the good news. Jesus loves us inside and out. Amen. Amen. Will you pray with me? God, we confess that we are not perfect. You already know that. And so now, in the quiet of this moment, we say to you those things we need to say. We confess our sins. Help us to let go of those things we need to let go of in this moment of silence.
prepare now to celebrate Holy Communion, and I offer these words of instruction and invitation. Here at the village, we celebrate an open communion. That means everyone is welcome to come to this table. You don't have to be a member of this church to participate in communion. After the prayers, we invite you to come forward from this side of the worship space. We'll give you a piece of bread and dip it into the cup and go ahead and eat it. And then turn to your seats from the center aisle or the side aisle. We do use grape juice here at the village. And if you have mobility challenges, just let someone know who's sitting near you and we'll be happy to come and serve you in your seats. When we gather around this table, we give thanks for the God of creation. We give thanks that we are stewards of the earth. And we remember that this earth is ours to care for. We give thanks for the Holy Spirit who comes and lives in us. The Spirit is the one who moves us, who nudges us, who speaks to us, and who gives us the courage to live as followers of Jesus. When we gather here, we give thanks for Jesus who came to the earth, God incarnate. We remember that Jesus came to heal the sick. He ate with sinners. Because he came to be with everyone, we know that he came to be with us as well. We know that on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, he said, this is my body, broken for you, eat this in remembrance of me. At that same meal, he took a cup, he blessed it, he said, this is my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins, drink from this all of you and know that I am with you. God, we ask you now to bless these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might live in the world as the hands and the heart of Jesus. Amen. God of 
love and mercy. You know these concerns of our hearts even before we name them, but it helps us to say them out loud. We pray today for those who are sick. We pray that you would bring healing. Help the doctors and the nurses who are caring for those we love, especially for those who are still waiting for a diagnosis, God. We pray for your wisdom. God, we pray for Patty's son and fiance who are making a new start. I pray that they will get settled in their new home, and we pray for them as they are preparing for their wedding. pray that you will give them grace, give them love, give them your wisdom, and give them direction. God, we ask for your healing mercy on all the victims of the situation in Chattanooga. God, we would pray for an end to gun violence in our country. We don't understand. We want answers. We want an end. But today, we simply pray for your love and your support for those who grieve. Surround them with your spirit with your care and give them comfort. God, we would pray that you would help us to be authentic people. Help us to be authentic with one another, to live our lives inside and out, to be authentic with you, first of all, and then to be authentic with those closest to us. Help us not to hide behind a facade, but to be true to ourselves. Help us in this community to practice what it is to be safe. Help us to accept one another. Most of all, we give thanks for Jesus, who accepts us. so grateful that Jesus came and taught us what it means to accept one another, to forgive, to be generous, to be loving, to be kind. God help us to follow Jesus, to be like him, and to change the world. We ask all these things in his name. Amen. <coughs> we will receive our offering now for the ministries of this church. As the basket is passed, we invite you to put your gifts in the basket to continue uh, the work of the Village Church. Uh, if you're not putting anything in the basket today, we invite you to touch the basket, to bless the gifts that are given, and to give thanks for the blessings in your own life as the basket is passed. We invite you to stand as we sing our closing song.
go into the world dancing, shouting, and singing, and sharing God's love with everyone you meet. Go in peace. Amen. 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 One, two, three.